What's going on, everybody? Jason Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Fortify here, and I am your host of the Jericho Force podcast, where we talk about integrating faith into the work that we do and living out our faith in the marketplace. I am very excited to happily announce we've reached a major milestone, 50 episodes. That's right. This week, we have reached the 50th installment of the Jericho Force podcast. Folks, we are at 50 episodes and we are just getting started. I'd like to send a special thank you to the Positive Power 21 Christian Media Platform, Jerry Royce, a.k.a. The Batman, and especially for all of you listeners who support the program and the platform. This would not happen without you. We give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Now, here's the thing. We are just getting started. We are just getting warmed up. Tune in week over week for more coaches, authors, actors and actresses, musicians, and influencers who are actively living out their faith in the marketplace. You can catch the Jericho Force podcast live Wednesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand on your platforms of choice. Remember, don't conform to the world's way of doing business. Transform by doing business God's way. We'll see you soon. What's up, family? Welcome, welcome to Positive Power Double XI, J. Royce Films. I'm Jerry Royce Live, and you're watching The Red Room with Shay Samuels, right here on Music Vision Television. That's right, MVTV-21.com. It's going to be awesome, y'all. So please share this file. It's going to be awesome. You know what's going to be? It's going to be lit. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of The Red Room. I am your host, Shay Samuels, and as always, I'm happy to have you. I want you to invite a friend, invite another friend, invite a friend, invite another friend, invite two cousins, but I want you to stay tuned. We have another amazing episode. Listen, I am not even going to do this justice, so I'm going to let her introduce herself, but I want you to stay tuned. This topic today, I know that it's one that everybody needs. Everyone needs to hear. I say it one week after another, but each topic is one you need to hear. This one, we're going to go a little bit deep. You need to stay tuned. You need to hear this so that you can overcome whatever obstacles you are facing. Why? Because everyone's facing an obstacle in this world. But I cannot get this show started without my lovely guest, Tori, introducing herself and every bit of what has been going on with her. Hello. Hi, everyone. How are you, Miss Jay? I'm, I'm Tori Nelson. I am a mother to a 13-time world boxing champion. And I'm blessed. Like, I'm blessed. And I'm actually, let me go on and put it out there. October the 22nd of this year, I want all y'all to come to Vegas because I'm getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Thank you. Yes. My God. Yes, make sure. And you know what? She's a female doing it. And I'm telling you guys, listen, it is important for us, one, to celebrate one another. I'm all about celebrating my sisters. We're talking about the pandemic. And she's like, y'all got to come to Vegas. We're like, are they going to be doing it virtual? Look, her, they even doing funerals virtual now. They're going to be doing this virtual. <laughs> exactly. But congratulations. It's really, really big for a female to be doing such an amazing thing, especially in the boxing world. You don't hear it much. It's really hard for me to watch kind of the boxing, not necessarily the ones with the gloves, but the ones with like the no 
Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The bare knuckle. I don't know why people would do that, but I'm all for the boxing. See, I'm the type of friend where it's like if I'm at one of your matches and, and somebody like getting you, I'm jumping in the ring. I know I'm not supposed to, but, but look, if I'm on the first to the 12th row, I'm jumping over people so I can get in the boxing ring and we're going to get them together. <laughs> I have a few of those friends too. I'm that friend. I'm like, you ain't going to be getting on her. <laughs> but we're going to be talking today about the battle. You know, I think nobody better to have this conversation with but you. We're talking about the battle. The battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. And so many times in life, we get hung up on trying to fix things. We get hung up on trying to fix our children. We get hung up on trying to fix our marriages. We get hung up on trying to fix the job, people at the workplace. We get so hung up on, look, I'm driving in the traffic and I want to pick, I want to fix the person next to me before I run them off the side of the road. I but know that's we have right. to get to a point where we realize that the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. So talk to us a little bit about what that means to you, even in, in the boxing world. You know, it's so funny you say that because boxing and life is the same. I love it. It's the same. Like you're fighting, you get in that ring Woo. and you're fighting your opponent every day. Your opponent is the devil throwing everything at you. Yes. You know, and you're going to have stumbling blocks. You're going to have knockdowns. But you get up and you keep fighting. You keep fighting. And like you said, it is not my battle. It's the Lord. As long as I keep my faith in him, I will succeed and I will make it. And my thing is also in the ring, I keep my faith in him. I'm going to win. Yes. It's the same as life. Yes. You're going to win. Mm. Like my, a lot of people say in the ring, you're looking for that trophy. You're looking for that world title belt. In life, you're looking to go to heaven. You're looking to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes, yes, man. You know, so it's the same. Yes. You are in there. You got, like you said earlier, you ducking and weaving. You like, you know what I'm saying? But, and God got you. He our coach. He got you. He Come got on. you. It's like, I think about Rocky when you're talking and how Mick was in the corner, like, you got it, Rocky. Oh, yes. That's how God's word is for us. God's word is on the sideline of us at every bit. If, so it's like, if your family, if they decided they wanted to give you a recipe, and in that recipe, it gives you everything you need to do to bake this cake. Eventually, you start memorizing it. Exactly. Right? And so uh, you, the first couple of times you might have to have it up on your cupboard so that yeah. you know this, but you do it enough. And that's how the word is. Your word is your defense mechanism against everything that would try to come to attack you. Amen. I think about David and Goliath and I think about how all these people, all these people were around and they had to go get little old David. And when little old David came, yes. people were looking at him like, who does he think he is? Yes. And what we're thinking we need to fight with is not what we're we not need what to fight we with. The Bible says that he had a slingshot. And even in that, Goliath was like, I dare you to take me down. Listen, exactly. people, there are some Goliaths in your life that's been there for a really long time. And you've been distracted by how high that person is or right. how high that thing is or how big that thing is. But guess what? In the eyes of God, it's small. Vengeance is mine, say of the Lord, but the battle belongs to the Lord. Talk to the people about that, Tori. Amen. You got that right. You know, and you come to things, just like you said, it's some big, big, big battles, some little battles that yes. can be the worst. But you, your word, like that word, I write scripture all the time, put it on my mirror, and I, I try to memorize it all the time because that's what's going to get me through. Come on. You know, and in the ring, the same. Yes. My, my coach is is my is my father God. Yes. And yes. he's saying he's given me the word, he's given me my instructions of what I need to do. You can be the biggest girl in the ring, but right. I'm gonna get you down. Like I'm gonna win at the end of the day because I know my word. Yeah. I know what God and I know what God has for me. Yes, man. And things might look so big, but you, you know, people tell you, you can't do that. You're not, you can't, you know, they told me, you too old to start boxing. Come on. You don't know what God has for me. Come you on. don't know my calling. Come on. I let them know real quick. No, oh, no, don't put that on me. You, you can <laughs> make me. 
You don't know what God has for me. And they're really giving it to you based off of their insecurity or their exactly. So it's what they could not do. Or yes. it's, but I speak to that person as well because God has a purpose for you. For everyone. So it yes. may be the cheerleader for her to get to that destination. Yes. What resource do you have that will be able to sow into her to get in that boxing ring? Are you a trainer? Are you a person that understands yeah. business? Are you a person that understands finances? Are you the cheerleader that's just on the side? Are you the person that's sharing the post so that people are aware that she's out here doing that thing? Are you the person celebrating her when she wins those belts? Are you the person who's saying, look, I'm just here when you need me. Are you the person that needs to be the listener when people need to talk about certain things, when they are going through certain things, when they feel discouraged? Every person has a purpose. Go ahead, Miss Tori. Yes, you preach it, Miss Shay. You go ahead, you preach it. I'm just gonna say hallelujah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you are so right. Everybody has their own lane. It's the problem is when they want to jump out their lane and get in somebody else's. Stay in your lane. You have a purpose. Do it. Yes. And the world will be so much better. Yes. Like everybody. And my thing is also, and speaking on that, pay it forward. Help another. Come on. God said, it's not just for you. You're supposed to go ahead and help somebody else. Like, love everybody. Yes. So that means help everyone. Yes. Don't pick and choose who you help. Or yes. don't just help no one. Yeah. No. <laughs> what, what good is it? I'm like, good, what you doing? Like, what you here for? Exactly. God purposed you for a reason. And yeah. here's the thing. I want to talk about the battle of the mind because that's where most people have their battles. The yeah. battle of the mind. Since we're talking about how people skirt over into the lanes that they don't belong in, that's a battle of the mind. Yeah. When you don't know what God has for you or when you don't feel like you have a purpose, anything Amen. can come after you and steal whatever purpose God God has designed for you. So there's a battle in your mind that keeps you fearful. There's a battle in your mind that keeps you not being bold. There's a battle in your mind that keeps you from going, keeps you going into other people's it's other people like you want to mess everybody else up, right? You want to get to you. Yeah. Like, I'm going to tell them what they can't do, but you can take just as much energy to tell yeah. yourself what you can do. Yeah. And so there's a battle of the mind. So talk to us about the battle, even in the mind. You know, the main thing is that's the devil's stronghold. That's the devil's playground. Yes. Because if he get in your mind, he can control your whole everything, your thoughts, your body, your actions. Come on. You have to put the word as your wall. You have to keep the faith in your heart and in your mind and your soul. Long as you know that the, your word, you know your word and you stand on it. That is what it say. The sword is the word of the Lord. Yes, you yes. got to put your armor on. Yes. And yes. you know, I've heard the other day, the reason why they said your helmet of salvation. Yes. You yes. know, they start, he started with your head because that's where the devil know if he get in. Come on. He got it. But that helmet of salvation is there for you to use it. It's there Come for on. a reason. Now, let me ask you, how many times have you gotten in the ring and, you know, you had to protect or put that helmet of salvation on. You had to put that helmet on yes, to protect man. the thoughts. How many times have you gotten in the ring and had to do that? Every time. Because you get in, you, you Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan to get hit in the face that first Come time. On. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Every time I got to put that helmet on. Because when you in there... You go in with such a whole different plan. Yeah. You go, but once that first hit in your face, you like, what you say? Oh, no. Nah. All them plans is out the window. And you, it's survivor mode now. Like, it's I for an eye, two for two for me. <laughs> you know, <but> you, <laughs> so, this is what I'm thinking about, like, when you come out, you know, not you particularly, but I'm going to just yeah. say as a body, people, when we have a battle in their mind, you know, and you have no strategy, you do what you think it looks like. So as a boxer, they're going to come out like this, right? <laughs> because that's what they see. They see you come out. So yeah. Like, okay. Well, this is what's causing her to win this stance. They yeah. don't know that it's on the inside in the battles that you overcame, but they see the stance. So they win and they come out like this, right? And they got what it looked like until they get hit in the face. Let and the strategy change. Yes! <laughs> the strategy changed. 
You ain't just fighting because you've been trained. You ain't fighting no more. All out the window. You go from fighting to swimming because you're just swinging. Yes. So you got to stay on task. Yes. Let me tell you, sometimes people see what they see. And I'm talking mainly about the boxing ring because that's where you lived for so yes, many man. years. And so here's the reality. When you're in the ring, you got to study your opponent. Yes. Listen, when you're going through a battle, I don't care what that battle is. You have to study your opponent. The you thing that I can tell you one thing for sure is you already know who the opponent is. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, yes Lord. And you know what? I'm glad you said that. You're right. You have to strategize. You have to patience. Mm. Like all of it, You all it all works together. Yes. You cannot just get in there thinking you're going to do In your mind, you think that because yes. that's what you train. Yes. But once that lick come and they punch is harder than what you thought it was going to be, you got to step back. You know what I'm saying? You got to step back, regroup yourself. Yes, yes. Put that salvation on yes. and get your mind together. Oh. And then when you come back swinging, you swing with the word. You swing it with patience. You swing it with a purpose. Yeah. I love that you said the swinging part because you said sometimes you got to step back. Yes, ma'am. I don't care how trained you are, how talented yes. you might be, how many times you've been around and about with a situation. Sometimes you got to step back. Amen. Waiting too long is going to cause you to be tired. Oh, yes. And once you wear yourself down, the opponent got you. You Then you're looking crazy. Yeah. You don't know, you're in the hole by now. You are knocked out. You out and that Satan, he got a stronghold on you now. He got you over there like, don't ever play with me. Yes. <laughs> I know that's right. Yes. So Lord, yes, please let them know. Step back. Take a step. Back. Ain't nothing wrong with regrouping yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You don't want to be, look, we're having so much fun on this show. We are talking about the battle of the mind. And why are we laughing? Because we understand how serious it is. Yes. We have to overcome every day. But even in the battle, there has to be a bit of joy, people. There has Amen. to be, we're giving you the resources necessary for you to understand, yes, you may be in the battle. So but we're you telling you that there has to be joy in the battlefield. Although you're going through it, although you know you're going through it, I need you to be reminded every single day that in this, I must have a bit of joy. I need to step back. I need to regroup. Amen. First, I got to have a strategy. But here's what I want to point to first and foremost. You got to be conditioned for the fight. Oh, glory to God. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You better say it. Because you will not get up in there coming out of Walmart, ain't never had no kind of training, ain't think you're going to get up in the ring. What? You got to go to church. Go to church. You got to get in the Word, get a Bible. You ain't got to go to church. Get a Bible, get something. Come on. When you train, mm. you go to this gym and you train, you train. You're not just training for a day or two. You're training at least for a year to two. And then when you're training for a fight, we in six weeks, six weeks training camp. Come on. So it's the same. I told you boxing is the same as life. Look, don't you I know in that Bible. You, the Bible is your training camp. Yes. You, yes. In, you getting your instructions. You yes. getting your body together. Woo! Yes. Like you eating right. You putting on the arm of God in training camp. Right. So when adversary come you are ready yes like when that opponent come i am ready satan can throw all he want but i'm ducking and weaving i may take a few shots but i'm i'm telling you i'm ready I'm i got ready. my armor on i'm ready but i'm giving it back yeah and i'm telling you and if i gotta take a step back i take a step back i regroup that mean i'm back in the training camp I'm back training. I'm back in, they, we call it the back in drawing board. Go yeah. back to the drawing yeah. board. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. So you grab that Bible. That's your instructions. You yeah. back at the drawing board again. Even if you got to start at Genesis all over again, oh, you got to it go. Is you fun. Got to do it. You got to it do is, it. It is that fun. Is that step back period. That's that exactly. Step back One thing, um, when you were talking, I was thinking about how my week went, and I didn't really consider the battle until you and I just were talking, and I'm thinking, oh, that was a battle. But why didn't I realize that it was an actual battle or something that could have been coming after me because I studied to show myself approved amen and for the fight so i'm thankful yes. for i did not even realize it so this week i had car trouble and i was but th thank god for provision i had car trouble i heard the car kind of making some noise and i said i'll take it to the mechanic after i get back right mm -hmm. and so you know how we do you got oh, yeah. you, you i can make it to the next gas station i don't know yeah. how to do that but listen, something said, go to the left and go ahead to the mechanic before I got home. So I went. And when I got to the mechanic, as soon as I was about to enter into the mechanic shop, the car broke down. Get up. Look and at God. The car started going, doot, doot, right? So when I went, I'm like, he said, take the car home. And I said, no, I'm not going to take it home. I tried to drive it, but then it didn't work. So I said, I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to tell you how I was conditioned for this fight. It never got to me. I was on the phone the whole time. The person I was on the phone with said, how are you so calm about this? Amen. I'm Amen. Mind. I'm conditioned for the fight. I'm not Amen. picking any mind. I'm talking to the mechanic. I'm talking to her. I'm taking care of something with her. I'm taking care of the mechanic. Yes. When I parked the car, I'm going to tell you what I did, Tori. I went across the street and got a Mexican meal. I said, oh, we got a restaurant right across the street. And then I'm going to call my Uber for my Uber to take me home. She said, how are you not going crazy? Listen, people, I was conditioned for hey, a fight. Man. When hey. I know that the adversary can come at me all shapes and forms, I yes. can't give it enough credit. Hey. And when you live a life like I just talked about with the recipe, when yeah. you live a life where you always are cooking the same thing or you're following the same recipe, it becomes repetitious after a point. Talk Thank about you. repetition in the in the ring. Wait, let, can, let me go back for yes, one. You can. Let me tell you, I, I went through as well. But my thing is, why worry when you know whose child you are? That's my thing. I had, I went through a storm as well. I knew, but you know what? I knew the storm was coming. Ooh. But my word was, I heard it in my spirit. You will win. You will win. He's going to try you, but you will win. I'm telling you, I went through. I didn't, the only thing, I, the only thing that got me, because he's still working on my patience. <laughs> but <laughs> I knew, I kept saying, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to get through this storm. Because yes. you can't have a testimony without a test. Right. So I'm saying, I got this, Lord. We together. Long as you with me, I'm good. Yes. Let me tell you, okay, you don't look like what you went through. Yeesh. Yes. I'm telling you, when I got on the other side of that storm, I praise and I thank God so Good. much. But the, his timing there ain't our timing by far. Not, not at all. Ooh, Lord, he's still working on me with that one. But they say his time is on time. Yes, it yeah. is. Ecclesiastes 3 yeah. says everything there is a season. And I was going to exactly. talk about the patience piece because the mechanic I took it to, they were going to charge me $2,200 to get it fixed. But I was patient. God Amen. still made provision. My daughter said, Mom, you can take my car for the week. There were certain things yeah. that happened that really allowed me to go through this week without stress or worry. Amen. I was conditioned for it and I was patient. So I ended up calling around and found out my other mechanic was going to charge me almost $1,700 less. Patience okay. allowed me, look, so God will allow you while in the battlefield and patient to overcome what you just said, overcome it. You won't even look like what you've been through. Amen. Two things that needed to be fixed on the car for the price of one and still save thousands of dollars. The other mechanic is able to do it. So listen, I'm going to tell you, God is able for the viewers. Yes, today. Is. God is able. You might be on the battlefield right now. You may be going through the fight and you might have been in this fight for a really long time. Amen. I want to encourage you, like Tori said, step back and regroup. Don't get knocked down. Don't yeah. get knocked out. We strategize the plan. And when you re-strategize the plan, God's going to give you the up-to-date plan, the right plan, Amen. and you'll be able to take the adversary Amen. out. So I want to encourage you guys to continue the fight. Endure to the end. Tori, tell them that they will win. You will win. The fight ain't yours. It ain't yours. <laughs> We're you know what you fight 
up. You just keep your faith. You stay grounded with the Lord. Keep your armor on. This yes. fight is not yours. This belongs to the Lord. He said, get behind me, daughter. I got you. I love it. Get I love behind it. me, son. I got you. I love it. Yes, just keep your faith. Keep your faith. Don't let the devil get in there and play with your mind. Mm -mm. No, Don't let him. this battle is not yours. You have your, your victory. Like I got world titles. I got Hall of Fame. But your life victory is way beyond. Come on, come well on. Well done, my good and faithful servant is all you want to hear. I love it. I don't want them to forget or miss where they can find you within the last couple of seconds. Where can they find you? Okay, you can get on my Facebook at Tori Nelson, or you can get on, on my Instagram at Tori Show Nuff. And if you want to, oh, I motivational speak, and I'm, you can just book me for anything. I'm there. I love it. Yes. I absolutely love it. Well, it has been a blessing for us to be on today talking about the battle of the mind. And I look forward to more of connection. Listen, people, listen, you might need to play this one back a couple of times. But for now, we got to go. Thank you for joining the Red Room. I'm your host, Shay Samuels. Until the next episode, mwah, we love you. Thank you. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. My name is Dr. Roosevelt Robinson, Jr., and I just self-published a book entitled God's Favor, My Wife. This book was prophesied by my apostle many years ago that said I will write this book and it will bless many. I want you to go pick you up a copy. This book will inspire you, encourage you, and bless your soul. If you're seeking for salvation, if you're seeking for a closer walk with God, if you're looking for ideas for your youth ministry, if you're looking for that husband or searching for that husband or wife that God has promised you or that you desire, this book will inspire you, encourage you, and help you on your journey with God. Go to barnesandnoble.com. That's bn.com or amazon.com and pick you up a copy. I guarantee it will bless you. I have shared my experience and my testimony of how I met my wife when we got married and how I have gained favor down through the years being married to my wife. Be blessed. Gabriella Nalvin has written a delightful children's book entitled Athena, The Adventures of a Fearless Dragon. This is a heartwarming story about a little dragon born with her two back feet missing. And during her journey across the country, searching for a new home, she and her brothers learned to work together to survive while strengthening their sibling bond. Athena, The Adventures of a Fearless Dragon is now available on Disney.